if you haven't been paying attention, uh, Little Nas X is this gay rapper uh, who brought out a uh, a video and rap song called Call Me By Your Name, and that is kind of a tribute to Satan, and also brought out these Satan sneakers. He brought out 666 pairs of Satan sneakers, as you probably know, 666 in the book of Revelations is the number of the beast. It's thought to be Satan, the satanic number. And he put out these sneakers with the human blood contained in them, and they sold out in about under a minute. And a lot of people were saying this is a, a very terrible thing. And of course, the left was saying, oh, silly, silly right wingers uh, shouting about Satan. What do they know? And of course, also that there is no Satan. So why is anybody worrying about this? And once again, this is an example. The, the thing that I'm talking about is the fact that Christianity explains the moral world in the same way science explains the physical world so that you don't have to think about science because the physical world just works. And you don't have to think about Christianity because the moral world is what it is. But the problem is, is if you forget science, you no longer can manipulate and work in the physical world. And if you forget Christianity, you actually forget the moral truths it teaches and you become part of the broken system. And that's what I think has happened with Little Nas X. Now, the thing about this video is it, it is quite beautiful. It is visually beautiful, really visually well done. I'm not a rap fan and I don't think the music is all that good or the lyrics all that intelligent. But what they are is they are honest. And last week I was talking about the Marquis de Sade and how I felt he was honest about uh, what the world was like without God and that he was the only writer who was honest about what the world was like without God and that it was hellish without God. And we'll talk about this more in the mailbag. As I said, there's a question about that. It's really important. And I think the interesting thing about that is that even though the Marquis de Sade was a reprehensible writer, a disgusting, pornographic, vicious writer, and I think a vicious thinker as well, because he was honest, his writing was very helpful to me in my search for God because it actually showed me, oh, this is what the world would be like without God and what the human soul would be like without God. And in the same way, I thought Little Nas X deserves some credit for actually telling his honest story. For and for instance, and remember, let's keep in mind uh, Carl Truman's book about the rise and triumph of the modern self. As we look at the opening of this, which show, takes us into this very beautiful kind of paradisical world uh, called Montero, which is, I believe, Little Nas X's real name. So this is the opening of this video. I can't play too much of it because, of course, it's filled with uh, foul language, but this isn't. And this is the opening of the video, cut nine. In life, we hide the parts of ourselves we don't want the world to see. We lock them away. We tell them no. We banish them. But here, we don't. Welcome to Montero. So then the snake is coming through it and he's sitting under the tree and the snake comes and tempts him into Satanism. And the thing is, right there, you got what uh, Carl Truman was talking about, the Rousseauian, what I call the Rousseauian fallacy, which is Jean-Jacques Rousseau's philosophy that we are essentially good but that society corrupts us. He never used the term noble savage, but it's often attributed to Rousseau that as savages were good. And one of the brilliant things that Truman talks about in his book is that Rousseau never believed that there was a time when these when savage people were actually these good people. It was kind of an imaginary thing. It was kind of reimagining the fall of man story, except the villain was not Satan. The villain was society. Now, of course, this doesn't make any sense because men build society. And if man is essentially good, why doesn't he build a, a good society? The fact is, in order for society as an outgrowth of man to be corrupting, man must be corrupt to begin with. And that's why the left is always so wrong about these things is they think, well, it's just, if we could just fix society, people would be better. But the people fixing society are the same people who made it, right? And so again, you hear that Rousseauian idea, that the whole idea is to bring out the self. It's to bring out the self, to be authentic, that all those things you're hiding, those ugly things, those uh, sadistic uh, ideas, or those masochistic ideas, those ideas of yourself uh, as, as breaking free of your uh, created nature. Uh, all those things can just are just being held back. And there we say no. We tell them we hide them away. Society tells them hide away. But here in Montero, they are free. And then the devil comes in and starts to tempt them away. And the, the idea that this is partly sexual is on a tree. There are, is some Greek language, uh, which I know because my son Spencer, no relation, told me, and he is a, a scholar of these things, that this is a quote 
from the Symposium of Plato, one of the greatest works of literature in all of Western uh, culture. Uh, this is Plato's Symposium in which a group of people, including Socrates, get together to discuss the nature of love. And the quote comes from a myth in this, uh, told by the playwright Aristophanes, who tells the myth that we were once all, um, there were only three genders. There was male and female and androgynous. And each person was twice what they were now. They had four hands, four legs, two heads, two sets of genitals. And then they were uh, t torn apart, right? They were taken uh, to pieces, and now they spend their time searching for their other half. And if you were a, uh, if, if you were androgynous, if you were male and female, then you're a male who searches for a female. If you were just male, then you are a male who searches for a male and falls in love with uh, men. And if you were a, um, uh, a female, then you are now a lesbian and you are a woman who seeks to fall in love with a woman. And that is how we came to be sexual creatures. This is the myth that Aristophanes Aristophanes tells, and it's the myth that's printed on the tree in this video about Montero, about this guy uh, falling into Satanism. I, you know, I should describe the rest of the video. Uh, Satan tempts him. He then travels down into hell. He's there in chains. It ends with Satan uh, sodomizing little X, little Nas X, and then little Nas X goes behind Satan and, and kills him steals his horns and becomes satanic. So it's very, like I said, it's a very honest video. If you look for the self, if you look for the self, if you want to bring out the self, ultimately you will find yourself a slave to Satan, and then you will find yourself becoming satanic. And that is exactly, I think, what happens, and it is exactly what the story tells it. The thing is, it transforms the values. It tells you that this is a good thing, an authentic thing. Now, the thing about this Aristophanes legend that we are broken up in, from two people and we're searching for the other half of ourselves, is it makes love into self-love, right? It makes love into self-love. And there's reference to this in the video, in this little Nas X vi video, that he wants to sleep with people that he envies so that he can become them. And that is the way he falls in love with the devil. But the fact is the symposium is actually thought to be an answer by Socrates to Aristophanes. And Socrates' definition of love is very, very different. Socrates says that love is a mediator between man and God. Love is not a thing in and of itself. It what mediates between man and God. And it, it basically brings us through the love of beauty and through the love of what is beautiful in eternal nature. Not beautiful in nature as we see it, but beautiful in eternal nature. It brings us through that love to unite with God and to become the friend of God and to become immortal. And this, of course, is why uh, Plato is often looked upon as one of the prophets of Christ. Even though he wasn't a Jew, he's looked upon as the Gentile prophet of Christ because that's very much a Christian idea, that Jesus is the mediator between man and God and that Jesus said to us, says to us, now you are my friend because you know what I'm doing. Before you didn't know what God was doing, but now you know and now you are my friend and that is the path to immorality, uh, to immortality, I'm sorry, is the path to immortality. But the quest for the self leads to hell where little Nas is sodomized by Satan and then essentially kills him and becomes Satan. He becomes one with Satan. And so the conservatives immediately said, oh, this is a terrible and it's a terrible thing that he's selling these sneakers with human blood in them and people are buying them up. And they complained that uh, he had done a previous video that children had liked, and he had marketed it to children, and the children were now looking at this satanic video. And it's really interesting that here was little Nas's uh, response to that. He says, as a gay person, he says, I spent my entire teenage years hating myself because of this crap y'all preached would happen to me because I was gay. In other words, he, people told him he would go to hell because I was gay. He says, so I hope you are mad and stay mad and feel the same anger you teach us to have towards ourselves. And this is a perfect example of Clavinist psychology that I've been talking about for the last two episodes, right? This, this idea that you rebel against the oppressive people because they fail to represent God. But if you don't have a right idea of God, you can't then transfer your devotion to God. You then rebel against creation itself. And that, I think, is what Little Nas X has done. He has become satanic by carrying his rebellion beyond the rebellion against oppressive people into a rebellion against nature and against God. So the left 
jumps on this. They love it when right wings complain. Oh my goodness, the right wing prigs are now they're going to complain about Satan. What could possibly be wrong with Satan? And again, the thing about Christianity is that it is so true that even if you take out the supernatural parts of it, it still describes the natural world. This is still what happens when you search for self. When you search for happiness in self, you are going to end up in exactly the situation. You're going to end up enslaved. If you search for your authenticity in self and sort of instead of what God made yourself to be, you are going to end up enslaved. So, so it's a depiction of the evil that will come to you if you follow this path, it's just telling you that that evil is good. And if you remember what I was talking about, that is the way that lies work. They don't tell you, the lies don't work by telling you that the truth is untrue. They, they work by telling you that the truth itself is evil and you should rebel against the truth. So here is Joy Reid telling people why right-wingers are so, so silly. How silly could they possibly be to speak out against this satanic video? This is cut eight. Who run the world? Well, obviously, Lil Nas X, duh. This week, he broke Twitter again, plus the internet and right-wing brains with his new video, Montero, Call Me By Your Name, in which he perfects certain pole dance moves, including one of which he's, like, upside down. Impressive. And also twerks on the devil before killing him. Natch. The song, which is a bop, is an obvious and artistic play on the conservative Christian idea that people who are gay will go to hell, which Nas does literally in the video. And he amplified the meme by releasing these Satan-themed custom sneakers, 666 of them, which sold out in less than a minute. The right-wing outrage was entirely predictable and proof that Lil Nas X knows his enemies better than they know him. Tweeting, y'all love saying we going to hell, but get upset when I actually go there. <laughs> so it's a perfect example of this confusion that the left is in, that if they can find something in um, society that is oppressive or that they want to change, then it is the it is not just society but creation itself that ultimately is to blame and this is the way you go forward if you are trying to find the self and trying to instead of trying to find the creator of the self instead of trying to say in the in the gospels it teaches us that we are nothing but branches on a vine and if we put that branch on the vine it becomes fruitful if the branch is not attached to the vine it's a good, good agricultural idea right if the branch is not attached to the vine it's dead it is dead you know in the LA Times they did this too and they just said oh you know, uh, Michael Wood Mikhail Wood possibly he says pop fans with long memories will recognize all this outrage from earlier controversies involving the likes of Led Zeppelin, Black Sabbath, Judith Priest, and Slayer. In 1985, the Parents Music Resource Center compiled a list of songs famously referred to as the Filthy 15 that posed a grave threat to susceptible listeners. Among them were Merciful Fates, Into the Coven, and Venoms Possessed, both included because of their occult content. And he just goes on to dismiss all this. But what's fascinating to me about this is these are people who think that if I won't admit that they can think themselves into another gender, that I have done violence against them. If I won't bake a cake to celebrate their wedding, then somehow their wedding has been dismissed. You know, so that, in other words, the opinions that people have are destructive. The ideas that people have are destructive. But here, a guy telling you that you, if you follow yourself, you too can be sodomized by Satan and become satanic. That's not a problem. The idea that the right would then rebel against this is not a problem. And it's an example of the fact that we on the right make make the false argument sometimes that there is no power in speech and that all speech is is permissible because it is all uh, harmless. That's not true. What we are saying is that they are wrong and we are right. And the power of the self is the power of slavery. To become yourself is to become a slave. To become yourself is to become a slave. To become yourself as you were made by God and therefore in, in attached to God as a vine, as a branch of the vine, uh, is freedom. That's that's why it says in the Bible, if you find, if you lose your life, you'll find your life. If you search for your life, you're going to lose your life. So I'm going to give the last word here to a demon, namely Screwtape, who is the demon in C.S. Lewis's great work, The Screwtape Letters. And the demon explains why God wants you to give up yourself. Why would he want you to give up yourself? And uh, Screwtape, of course, being a demon, calls God the enemy. And he says, the enemy wants to bring man to a state of mind in which he could design the best cathedral in the world and know it to be the best and rejoice in the fact without being any more or less or otherwise glad at having done it than he would be if it had been done by another. 
In other words, he wants you to be as glad of your creativity and your successes and the beautiful things that come out of you as you are glad of the beautiful things that come out of other people. That is not an easy thing to do, but it is a possible thing to do. He goes on, Screwtape says, the enemy wants man in the end to be so free from any bias in his own favor that he can rejoice in his own talents as frankly and gratefully as in his neighbor's talents or in a sunrise, an elephant, or a waterfall. In other words, he wants you to see yourself as part of a beautiful creation. He wants you to not be in rebellion against creation. He wants you to be in sync with creation. Screwtape goes on, he says, he wants each man in the long run to be able to recognize all creatures, even himself, as glorious and excellent things. He wants to kill their animal self-love as soon as possible. But It is his long-term policy to restore to them a new kind of self-love, a charity and gratitude for all selves, including their own. When they have really learned to love their neighbors as themselves, they will be allowed to love themselves as their neighbors. we We must never forget what is the most repellent and inexplicable trait in our enemy. He's talking about God. He says, God really loves the hairless bipeds he has created and always gives back to them with his right hand what he has taken away with his left. That, that is the truth.